Hello, everybody. Hold on. Make sure my camera is nice and clear. <clears throat> We gotta refresh so we can join the chat on my computer that's right in front of me. All right, oh, I have to watch a commercial. Okay, hello, everybody. Hi. Um, so today I'm going to be doing a I'm just going to be making my zipper pouch that I've been working on. You might have seen over on social media, <clears throat> um, Instagram, Facebook. But I'm going to be just filming this tutorial, so I thought maybe it would be interesting for you guys to... Hello! Um, I don't know, I guess, just see how I do it. So I, uh, I'm just go going to be filming the tutorial, sewing this one. I have another one. And um, yeah, and then chatting, so... Um, I am going to be doing just the up shots, so I have a camera that's right above me, and uh, I just need to prepare that, make sure my lighting is good. I use a Rebel T5i, if you're curious, with my 18 uh, to 55 STM lens. STM lenses are good because they're, they have a silent motor, and we'll good for filming so that the uh, autofocus doesn't make noises okay my eyes are going buggy because of the lights I can't tell if I'm just just chilling in the a.m. yes the kids are at school yay finally get some work done okay um, it's been nice it's been nice to have the kids at school all right, so now whenever I do, gotta make a little. I have a dog in the background, so you might hear her. What am I doing? I gotta bump up my ISO. It's too dark in here. All right, so how's everybody doing? Everybody staying safe and healthy and all those things. I'm showing my camera what this pouch is gonna look like. If you want a closer look, it is just a little business card wallet type of thing. So I will have a, like this will be the tutorial that I'm filming now. Um, and then I'll have, of course, all the measurements and stuff like that, but this is just kind of like a hangout type of thing. Um, so you will see a professional tutorial on this pouch, but it's so cute because it has these little corners, the cork corners, and the back is made out of cork as well. And then they have the fabric here and then just cotton on the inside. And then this cute little D ring, if you want to stick it on your keychain, your keys, your uh, wrist strap. So. Come on, Evie, come here. <coughs> oh dear. She's in my other room and it's very echoey in there. Come here, girl. Come here, Evie. Come here, come. Sorry guys, <laughs> I had to walk away there for a second. <laughs> Okay, all right. So, all right, so I'm just going to turn down my brightness again. Okay, so whenever I do my tutorials, I like to give all the pieces. And then sometimes I have to, I literally have to make sure that everything is accounted for. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Can't push you guys out of the way. I 
definitely have to do this over again. Oh, my blurriness. I'm getting blurry. Hello from Arkansas. Up here in Canada, it's starting to cool down a lot. Not excited about that. I think my lens is dirty. Waking up and it's seven degrees, which is, you know, here in Canada, zero is freezing. So that's pretty. Oh, Jesus, kidney stones. That's horrible. Your poor thing. Has it calmed down? Are you okay right now? You can't even see what I'm doing. Hey, there you go. So yeah, I just kind of lay out all of my pieces for you guys. And take them out of the way. corner pieces. I'm going to pretend that they are attached. I cut this out as a square and then I split them apart to get my perfect triangles. I have a zipper and a D-ring and I'm pretty sure, oh wait, one more piece and then my little tab piece. All right. So that's all I do for those shots. Now we can start assembling the bag. Little pouch. Look at dirty hands. How unprofessional. About a month ago, my dog bit my finger, but by accident. She did it because um, I had a stick in my hand, so she went to grab the stick, but instead she bit my finger and now I have a bruise under my nail and it's been like two months and it's still, I think it's been, it's been like probably a month and a half ish, but there's still a bruise under my nail. So if you see that in my tutorials, I'm sorry. The leaves are changing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the first thing we're going to do is put on our corners. And I'm going to get my ruler. So I am working on this one and then a um, sort of similar, similar version. Uh, maybe like a, a clutch, the larger clutch style. But I'm putting these little corners on inside out and then I'm flipping them down. So that there's no raw edges at all. Okay. Do one inch from the top and then centered at three inches here. All right, hopefully. And then I will get, oh man, I need a little pen, sole or pen, I this is going to show up. This is the only way I can kind of figure out how to do this is literally mark it. Sorry, my dog in the background is chewing on a bone. So if you hear some weird noises, that's happening. I got this, um, it's like a chalk pencil. And I got it with a, like a chalkboard calendar type of thing, but it doesn't show up, but it shows up enough, I guess. Not as much as I would like. Almost like a pencil crayon. I need to find something better. It's not going to work. Not going to work. How about this? See, this part's okay if you want to put the marker on here because it's uh, 
it's not gonna you're not gonna see so you could use a really like an actual marker and it's fine my cell phone yeah make sure it's still hopefully i didn't mess it up okay there you go Hopefully that's good. See, sometimes like when you do things for the camera, you can't really tell if you're doing it right because you need to like actually look over top of your project and you can't do that or your head's going to be in the shot. Okay. See, it's off a little. Okay. All right. I'm gonna sew it on now. Where's my foot? Okay. Just lining that up. So I did all the close-up shots though um, earlier. I did them upstairs in my other studio. Just because it's my my sewing room downstairs, which is where my light is, is not very comfortable right now because I'm renovating. So I don't really want to be down here. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to put the other one on. So, oh, I lost my thread. But yeah. all these little things I make sure aren't in the video <laughs> how does it be a long tutorial all right okay. now I'm gonna give the camera a shot Fold down those little thingies and then a perfect edge here. I love that. Like you could technically with this, you know, cork, because of course it doesn't fray or anything, you could just sew the triangle right on, just do a top stitch, and then you would have that little bit of raw edge. And depending on the fabric you are using, if you are using leather or something like that, you could do it like that. But I kind of like the way this looks. And now I'm going to do a top stitch and I like to, I bump it up to a three, but I think I like 3.5 lately on my machine, of course. Yes, it looks good. So what's everyone working on? Anything amazing? Everybody already working on Christmas gifts? I don't even want to think about Christmas gifts, but I feel like I have to. Especially like when I want to make handmade gifts. Sometimes I'll make wood gifts. And then, you know, if it's if I do it in the garage. I do it in the middle of this in November. Ow. <gasps> no! I just cut myself. <sighs> wow. Oh my god. <laughs> that just happened. 
I did not know those scissors were that sharp. All right, so then I'm going to take a break for a minute. Dude, I'm bad, sorry. I don't want you to see that. Like I said, this stuff happens and then I, uh, you don't have to see it. It's like, it's just like a little paper cut though. It looks like a paper cut. Okay. Oh, no, you can see the blood. Sorry, guys. Awesome, Evie, come. Okay, so that was interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonder if I got that in camera here. Probably did. <laughs> Okay, what's next? Um, yeah, okay, I'm gonna do this zipper next. <laughs> Everyone's dropping off. Oh my God, she cut herself, this is disgusting. If you're just tuning in I totally cut my finger and um, but we're gonna move on we're gonna keep going because we don't have time for that okay all right now we're going to put okay not too bad though okay so now I'm gonna install a zipper but I always like to make sure that my zipper is going to open from right to left so I make sure I know which way it's going before I install it. I'm just going to do the top first and then I will take my lining and I'll put that on and then reclip. Okay. All right. So I'm just filming a tutorial for new. Okay. I'm going to get my zipper foot. Where are we? I know I brought it down. Did I already take it out? Did I just knock you guys again? I'm so sorry. There it is. This is my zipper foot. Okay. All right. So now I'm just going to go right next to the zipper tee. To that zipper pull I lift my presser foot and move that out of the way move the zipper pull out of the way I'm gonna use a different pair of scissors so that I don't injure myself again Okay, now I'm going to open it up. Press that down. And I did use um, 
interfacing for all of my pieces. Okay, I gotta go see what my Labrador is doing. Sorry, guys. Alright, now I'm just going to do that top stitch, got to flip it around. side. The other side is just cork. This beautiful chocolate cork which is from MM Cork Supply in Canada. If you're curious. Um, but the other pouches that I made are from a company called MB Cork and they are located in Portugal which is where the majority, I think it's like 70% of cork trees are are in Portugal. I guess they just have that perfect climate for cork trees. It's pretty interesting though. If you're ever bored, um, they have little videos of how they harvest the cork and how it, you know, keeps regenerating itself. So you don't have to tear down the cork trees. You just kind of peel off the cork and then. wait I think that they'll wait like seven years and to do it again but they have so many trees that they're able to constantly have a supply as they rotate around all the cork trees pretty neat This is a mess of a stream right now, so if you're just showing up, I cut myself with scissors. You can't make this stuff up. You really can't. Okay. So, but I am, yeah, I know, but I am just filming my tutorial right now, so I'm doing all the up shots. My camera is mounted above me. And then, but I will have this as an actual tutorial, so I'm just thought I would, you know, chat with everybody. All right. I love your channel, by the way. If you ladies haven't gone to the Bob and Wee channel, it's a cute little channel that's, I forget how many subscribers you have. Is it, are you emerging? I have dates. Sorry about that, my phone wanted to install updates. No, you're not allowed. Okay, so that is how it's looking now. Now we'll work on a little tabby thing um, and for this I'm going to just fold it in half if you had cotton fabric then you could you know fold it up like bias tape nice 
That's good. 2,000. You're coming. I think you're growing a lot faster than I was, though. I can tell you that. Mine was a snail's pace, but I also, I feel like, you know, back in, back then I was, you know, the, the, uh, the quality of my camera wasn't as good, so all that stuff kind of hinders your channel when you don't have it looking all professional. So once I finally upgraded, things started going faster. I'm just folding that little piece of cork in half, and then I'm just going to do a uh, top stitch along both sides just to make it look like a little strap. Where's my other foot? Oh, there it is. I usually take, when I take off my foot, I usually toss it. And I never know where it goes. Which is not a good thing to do. cute is that just and then I usually like to make it bigger and then I'll like I'll take the best part <laughs> I'll take the best where it looks the best because usually it doesn't look the best in the beginning like this is just a giant mess so I'll take it from the middle okay get my scissors out It's about, it's about an inch long, I'd say. Once I cut it. There we go. And then I will baste that into place. Yeah, I actually, I made a few of these and I put them at my new Shopify, is it Shopify shop? I am deciding to go away from Etsy. Yeah, this is Quark. So I, I think I'm going to drop Etsy completely and um, just do Shopify. So this, I'm not sure if there's anything underneath. Oh yeah, there's, yeah, my, my link for the Shopify shop is right there. So. I'm thinking of selling some of my handmade goods as well as also some, what do you call it, notions, I'm not sure yet, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> but eventually, I would like to sell actual stuff, you know? Don't baste it to my lining. I got to, uh make some more money otherwise my husband's gonna make me go back to work <laughs> yeah like I don't seem to have many problems selling on Etsy I just don't really like it anymore <laughs> like people keep buying things like my patterns and stuff they keep buying them and, I'm, and I don't have very good rating because people are very ruthless when it comes to patterns I mean I have like a four star but um, I don't know. I just want to get away from it. And, uh, back in the old days, it used to be 20 cents for your listing. And then that was it. And then, you know, you have to factor in your cut that PayPal would take. And then now, you know, Etsy takes a cut of everything. And it's just... I don't even know how, like some people are saying it's not even worth it anymore. Yeah, I know. That's how they all though. They, they, they do, they give you good deals and then they rope you in. And then, uh, 
and then they don't care about you anymore. Kind of like what Craftsy did. Because Craftsy was, it was good. Like, you used to be able to put your patterns up there for free, and you used to sell them for free, but, um, but there's other reasons for the site, so it was kind of like just one of those things. And then as soon as Craftsy turned to Blueprint, they just dropped everyone. Everyone who put in the time and made patterns for their site and drove traffic to their site and helped them create sales on their site, they just dropped this all like a ton of bricks. And and now look at them. They, uh, I think they had to claim bankruptcy or something. Because it's like, well, yeah, you can't just drop you, the people who made you. That's not very nice. But yeah, I put uh, Decoville light on this um, cotton fabric, which I've never used before because it's quite expensive. It's actually seven dollars for a quarter of a yard. Quarter of a yard, seven dollars. Quarter of a yard here, so that's twenty eight dollars a yard, which is just obscene in my opinion. But I mean, I I do get it. It's very nice. I don't know what how much it is in in the U.S., but here I just thought that was a little crazy but I could only get it at Emmeline I think it was I mean that might be how much it is in the US I don't know but I was just like whoa this better be amazing and it is it is amazing oh is it okay even like I think like Peltex too I thought that Peltex would be cheaper through a um a supplier but it's not <laughs> it's not at all uh, all right so then i guess you just have to factor that into the price of your bags though which makes you know when you make things not cheap and you have to pay so much for all the supplies for it Okay. When I do my lining, I, I like to up my seam allowance just so that it sits nicely inside the pouch. Oh. My little makeshift. though because that decoville like makes the the um the cotton almost feel like the uh, cork almost gives it the same thickness decoville light is, is the one i use that got yeah hmm $16 a yard. I know. I wish, but, you know, if I ordered from Got Interfacing also, you know, I have the risk of paying duty, which nine times out of ten. They're horrible. I remember one time I bought something off of Jimboree, and I think the order was $60, and I had to pay $30 shipping, or duty, when it got here. Which is like 50%. I don't know how that computed. Okay. So I like to leave my little hole there. Okay. And now I'm going to cut off the excess and not cut myself.
But I found a supplier for the medium weight interfacing and the heavy weight, and the medium weight is like a dollar seventy five a yard, and the the heavy weight is two dollars. This is heavy weight. And I was like, what? And at my store around here, it would be like $13 Canadian, which is crazy still. So. I'm going to reinforce my little D-ring there. I'm not allowed to go over to the US unless I want to go there for two weeks. So I can't go shopping. So I can't go over to Joanne's or Hobby Lobby, which I live over, like I live near Niagara Falls, so I could just hop over. But then I can't come back. <laughs> so I was like, sorry kids, I'm just gonna go to Joanne's for two weeks, I'll be back. Uh, imagine. Hi, kids. I don't have anybody. I wish I had like some family like right over the border, but I don't. <laughs> Poking out all the corners. My hands are falling asleep. I got this carpal tunnel. And I have to hang my hand down and get the circulation back. I like to use my handy dandy, uh, knitting needle you have to be careful with the cork because you can just bust right through it yeah this one's from mm cork supply in canada she uh graciously gave me some to put in my video okay Do they look the same? <laughs> Which one's better? My stitching doesn't look so great on this one though. Looks... Oh, okay, it is. I see, I see, okay. I'm still recording. <laughs> Sometimes I forget. Four minute recording. That's not good. When I make my clips too long, it just makes things take longer. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go in and grab that lining, pull it out, and then we can soak the hole. It's a lot easier when you interface that line. Mm -hmm. Every time I look up, my eyes get all crazy because of the lights. Too bright. There we 
go. So yeah, now I'm going to work on the tutorial so that I can have it for you guys. And then I have to do blog post for the measurements, source all the things I use for it so you guys can get it all if that's what you want to do. Takes a long time though, doing tutorials. But it's okay because I love it. It's fun. Still hasn't gotten old. So yeah. You can see my messy uh, craft room in the background. My husband is in my craft room and I don't like it at all. But we are renovating another room and I'm once that room is done then I can kick him out. For now, I feel like I'm an invaded space. So yeah, oh, I'll show you um, the other ones I made. So cute, okay. Look at this. This is just the natural cork, and then I have this glitter vinyl, which this one, this glitter vinyl, it comes in, I think, like 12 inch rolls. Apparently you can't buy it in yards. But um, it's great for these little accents. It's not super thick, so accent work is the best for it. I forget who uh, who sells it in the U.S. I know more me now buys it off of someone, so if you see her using it. But look at this. Pink cork. This is from that place. This is MM Cork Supply. No, MB Cork Supply in Portugal has this with the pink. Look, look at how cute that is. And then look at this one. Like, what do you call that? A Mandela or something? Mandela? So cute. And then I did the, um, yeah, yeah, I think that's it. But I don't know. I don't think they, I'd be too afraid to buy from them and uh, have me pay a lot of money. So, but there is a, there's a shop down the street from me that actually has like every color so I can it's like eighteen dollars a roll <laughs> which again I think is expensive but when you're only using a little tiny bit though for things like that then it goes a long way hello but yeah I have these at the Shopify so if you guys want to check out that I mean you don't have to buy it of course but you can just go look at it and tell me if you like it <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll be, I'll put this on like Facebook and stuff. So thank you. Yeah. This will be the next tutorial. Yay. For Jewel. And then I will also have, like, I want to do the clutch version and then maybe have like a zipper pouch or a zipper pocket here and then maybe a card slot inside. So that is the goal for the bigger size. And because you can only put like business cards in here or coins. Oh, I made these ones actually with um, waterproof canvas too. So it just creates more, more strength and, you know, just more, <laughs> more robust. But this is the, the uh, cotton version. But again, you can of course make this whole thing out of cotton. Just make sure you use your stabilizer because that, if not, then it's just not going to be as nice. So yeah. So I'm going to go and I'm going to go and work on this now. If you hung around the whole time, thank you for this, especially with my Labrador in the background. She is, she's upstairs pouting right now because... She's not allowed to eat the garbage, but she's almost a year now. So if you guys have been around this whole time, you know my Labrador puppy. <laughs> she's uh, almost almost 11 months, yeah. And it's funny because I just talked to the vet and um, they won't fix her until she's a year and a half. So 
those hormones are going to be raging for a while. You know how they say, like, sometimes dogs settle down after they get fixed? It's going to be a while until that happens. But, yeah. So, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye, guys. <laughs>